What's going on everybody, it's the Beastly Gamer here. Playing a little bit of Bayonetta 2, the demo that was available for the Wii U. And uh, I gotta say, this game is awesome. I didn't think it was as awesome as it is until I saw 9to5Gamer's video on it. And it looked so fun I had to go in there and download it myself and give it a try. If you're a fan of Bayonetta 1, I think you're gonna love this game. It feels extremely fun. I mean, the atmosphere feels great, the character feels awesome. The moves are very reminiscent of the original game, but it seems like they even tightened up on that control mechanic, and uh, it feels awesome. The soundtrack to this game, I mean, just a little 15 minutes that you get to play this, it feels fresh, it feels awesome, it feels new, and uh, I think this is going to be a winner for the Wii U. Now, I'm not saying that this is going to move tons of units of Wii U's, but Bayonetta does have its own cult following. It has its own group of gamers out there that love it, and uh, see it as one of the best uh, best games in that genre of action, adventure, Devil May Cry, uh, God of War type of adventures. And uh, this game holds its own in that genre. And uh, I gotta say, I'm really excited to play this now. Uh, it's gonna be coming out real soon. And uh, I think this will be one of the Wii U games that I actually pick up because of the way this feels and the way that it's presented. Um, I gotta say that the guys behind this game have done an excellent job making this a Wii U exclusive. It feels great. And I wouldn't say that it necessarily looks next gen because it really doesn't. But uh, from the time that I played it, and I've played through the demo once, from the time that I played it, I gotta say that it feels uh, on par with some of the, the next gen offerings of PS4 and uh, some of the games that have been available for the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One probably pale in comparison to the fun factor of this game. Um, as you guys can see, there's a lot going on, there's a lot of move sets, it's, it's well-timed, and uh, I think Bayonetta is going to be an awesome exclusive for the Wii U, and uh, more than likely, they'll be making more Bayonettas. I know that the studio behind this game has hinted at uh, using Nintendo as its exclusive console for the Bayonetta series, and uh, if you like Bayonetta 1, I think you're going to love Bayonetta 2. I like the way that they're going. I like the direction this game is going. It just feels really fun. That's what I kept saying the entire time I played this demo. I said, this feels fun. You know, even the, the, the little section of the game in which you, uh, you fly around uh, and fight the dragon at the end of this demo. It all felt very intuitive, put together extremely well. You can tell that they put their hearts and their souls into this experience. And I think that as gamers, and especially people who own the Nintendo Wii U, uh, we are definitely going to get some good stuff out of Bayonetta. Now, if you have a Wii U and you're looking to have possibly win Bayonetta 2, subscribe to 9to5Gamers. Uh, he's in my, my feed, and also his link will be in the description below. He will be giving out a brand new copy of this game on the day of release. And so you don't have to be, you know, grandfathered in as a subscriber. You can even be a new subscriber. And if you have a Wii U and you would like to have the opportunity to win Bayonetta 2, check out 9to5Gamers page. It's an awesome place for gamers by gamers. Now I want to talk to you guys briefly about Resolution Gate. Resolution Gate, this is going to be a, it's a whole new subcategory under gaming. Resolution and, and frame rate is having a big, it's taking a big chunk out of the news as far as video games are going, as far as gamers are concerned as of late. Uh, Assassin's Creed Unity is, is already... Uh, <laughs> running at 900p 30 frames per second across both platforms and a lot of people are upset about that because the PS4 is arguably more powerful, has better hardware and 99% of multi-plats have been performing better on the PS4. So naturally when Ubisoft says that they're going to lock the game at 30 frames per second 900p on both consoles, we kind of feel like they're, they're uh, shanking the PlayStation platform. They're, they're kind of stabbing them in the back because more so than likely the the Assassin's Creed Unity PlayStation 4 port can run at a higher resolution and frame rate than the Xbox One port. Now here we go again. Dragon Age Inquisition. This tweet right here came out yesterday. As you guys can see, PlayStation 4 will have a 1080p version of the game and Xbox One will have a 900p version of the game. And uh, as they say here, they're optimizing it for each system, which means the PlayStation 4 is the optimal 
gaming experience when it comes to multiplex. This is over a year. You know, I mean, we're right at a year. It's been a year since these systems have come out. And we've seen the same thing, you know, from the beginning up until now. Some people think that right now is the time that we're actually going to see that, that gap be bridged. I think now we're starting to see that this this bridge is not going to be um, <laughs> built. I think that the Xbox One is where it's at and the PS4 is where it's at. And uh, nothing short of new hardware is going to change that. Uh, I think it's a good thing for PlayStation owners. I think it's not so good for Xbox One owners. But I think it can be good for Xbox One owners because the Xbox One is not far behind the PlayStation 4. Uh, it's still able to handle next generation experiences. I don't necessarily think that uh, resolution is important as frame rate, but 900p still looks great. Still an awesome looking uh, you know, image when you're playing a video game. And uh, the Xbox One handles 900p apparently with ease. And uh, it will be a slightly downgraded experience visually from the PlayStation 4 version of Multiplats. But for, for the people in the world who are Xbox fans, who have been with Microsoft since the Xbox inception, and who have been hardcore 360 fans, you know what you're going to get out of that experience. You're going to get Gears of War, which is an awesome uh, first party uh, experience from you know, Microsoft Studios. You're going to get Halo, which is an awesome first party exclusive to the Microsoft brand. You're going to get Forza, Forza Horizon 2, with argu arguably the best racing game in the world. Uh, it's been, you know, compared to some of the greats out there, as far as I I'm concerned, and it looks awesome. And uh, th there's more to come. I think Microsoft has to win over the hearts of gamers through their exclusives and through their content. I think they've got to win over gamers through uh, games with gold, changing the dynamic of the way that works. I think they need to uh, release games that are awesome, like Ori and the Blind Forest. Hey, it doesn't matter to me what resolution that game's coming out on, what frame rate it's going to be. I think it's going to be 60, but that game looks incredible. It looks awesome, and it's only coming to the Xbox One. There's a lot of Xbox One exclusives, and if you're a big fan of Xbox and what Microsoft has to offer, and the Xbox One is your, your go-to console. On the other side of the spectrum, if you're a PlayStation fan, which I drift more into the PlayStation camp than the Xbox camp, you got a system that has awesome exclusives as well. You got Uncharted, you got The Last of Us, God of War, uh, you know, <laughs> I was about to say Sly, but there's tons of awesome, awesome PlayStation exclusives as well. And I guess it all depends on us, the gamers, to decide which way we're going to go in this game war, because that's, that's the way it's looking. These these companies are going to fight tooth and nail for your loyalty and your support. And with the PlayStation brand, of course you're going to have all these exclusives, but when it comes to multiplats, you're going to have a slightly better experience. Unless more developers do what Ubisoft is doing to avoid the conversation and locking frame rates and locking resolution, which I think is a really bad choice. I think that that will make the consumers look at your your development studio as shysty because if, if if a game was coming out on pc which of course assassin's creed will be coming out on pc is going to be running at 1080p at a higher frame rate than 60 more than likely on powerful pcs that's not a locked experience they're going to be able to play it the way that the game was intended to be played now i know the playstation 4 is nowhere near a top tier pc but it is arguably more powerful than the Xbox One. I feel like the PlayStation 4 should have the option to, to be a slightly better resolution and slightly better frame rate. I think that locking them is doing a disservice to the people in the world who own the PlayStation 4 and feel that it's a more powerful hardware and more powerful system. But hey, that's just a beastly game of thoughts. I want you guys to let me know what you think about this. Tell me what you think about Bayonetta 2. This game is awesome. And I'll definitely be picking it up. And if you have a, a Wii U and you're looking forward to possibly winning Bayonetta 2, check out 9to5Gamers. His link will be in the description. And you guys let me know what you think about Resolution Gate. Does resolution matter? Does frame rate matter? Does only the fun matter? Because if that's the case, we can go back to Nintendo and leave all this other shit behind. I'm the Beastly Gamer, and I'll see you guys next time.